we're, we're getting ready to assemble our two-stroke engine here. And a lot of times when you're real, not real familiar with the vehicle and we're looking at this and you can see that we have shims here and you're thinking, well, what is that, you know, what is that shim for? You know, what is, does that need to be there? In this case, it's a spacer at the, as well as a shim. And so we, our, big, our best friend here is to take our parts fish here. This is the right side of the motor. So if we look here, here's the front. This would be the left. This would be the right. And on this uh, rear shaft here, on our counter shaft sprocket here, as I go along here, I can see that there's this bushing in here. That's what's right here. But sometimes it's just a real thin washer. And I've got a really cool trick that will help you identify whether... Because uh, you're definitely going to want to use this, but you know, Sean, on your motor in particular, somebody just took their own washer to try and set the height, and that does not work on metric vehicle. You need exact OEM stock parts. You can't go to Baumgars or Menards to to get washers because they're precision, right? So check out what I'm going to do here. I've got um, you guys all have these uh, six-inch steel rules in your toolkit. And what I do here is I've taken and cut one off to four inches, and this literally is just my two-stroke, uh, or it could be a four-stroke dirt bike with vertically split crankcases to be able to see if the bearings are set at the same height. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one shaft, and you see there's no washer here, right? And I'm going to basically hold this tight, and I'm going to swing this over, and I'm going to see if there's any gap on this other one and I do have a gap okay uh, and to, to show it more in depth if I hold it on this one and hold it tight do you see the big space there's a pretty big gap between this the bottom of this rule and this gear it's, it's not flush so there I'm flush but when I hold it up here there's a gap so that tells me that these bearings should be at a different height or something's missing Okay, I might be missing a washer or anything. So then what I do is I come in here, and if I look at these two bearings, they're the same height. Okay, one's, if they were off, I'd be able to rock this back and forth, but do you see how they're the same height? See that? Well, how in the world, if this one is taller than this one, what's going to happen when we try and put the cases together? It's going to be uneven and it's not going to bolt up correctly. So I'm, I'm concerned either something isn't bolted all the way, or I'm concerned something isn't right, or... Or whatnot here we, we just might not be ready to put these cases here but let's just go ahead and look at our parts fish here and so we know this one is that one and what I want to do is I want to look on the other end of the shaft here all of these pieces go here notice on this one how it's kind of deceiving see that little arrow yes <clears throat> so this arrow that you can barely see on the fish here Kawasaki does this a lot because they're just saying this is imaginary to that arrow. Make sense? So that's the built-up arrangement. On the other side, I have a bushing and a snap ring, okay? And so I don't see any other shims. So I'm going to move to the other shaft here. On this shaft, I see no shims, and I see nothing here. So it, it's pretty impossible to screw this up, but for some reason, this shaft is higher than that one. So we need to take a look at what's going on. Before I uh, move this over to try and figure out what's happening... The other thing I'm going to look at here is making sure that my my shift forks, um, my shift fork rod is fully seated, which it was. I don't know if you could kind of hear that metal to metal. Sometimes these are directional. Sean, on your motor, you have one side that's actually machined down, so it has to go in a certain way. So all of this looks really good. What gear do they tell us to put the trans... When they assemble the cases, what gear do they want us in? Neutral. 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 That's very, very standard. So what we're going to do is I want to check the depth of this. Would you guys agree that this surface is precision machined? Yes. Okay, so what I could do is I could take a nice flat, something flat and straight and set it across here. I'm going to zero my tool. I'm going to switch it to inches for me. And now I could take this. Check this out. This is pretty cool. I'm... 2.620 thou. So we guys just remember the 620 for me? So if I go over here, shouldn't I be the same? Two six twenty eight eight thousandths. I mean that's that's the same. Okay, and I'm not being really precise. I could be off a little bit, but that's a big difference than a great big thick washer. Makes sense? If I wanted to be really cautious with this, do you see how this is kind of rotating on me? 
what I would do is go get a precise straight edge and do something like this and then I could take and, and make sure that I'm going to be the same on both. But what I am seeing is it looks like these are, this one's 672 this time because we're on a taller, taller or a different tool, right? And let's see what I got here. 671.3, I mean, so those are realistically the same height. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay, so that bothers me how these are not the same height here. You know, this one, this one here is, and you know what, guys? Just moving that stuff around, they're at the same height now. So maybe this wasn't, you know, seated or caught or, or whatnot, but we're, uh, we're sitting good again. And you guys got to, what, what sucks about this cowie tranny, I'm going to move this out of the way here. Ah. You see the bearing came out? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that snap ring is actually not, it's actually come out of there. We need to, I'm going to flip this around. We got a little bit of work to do that's going to make our life a little easier here. And I can't dump this out. So where's our where's our idler gear for this? What we're going to do on these cowies is we're going to go ahead and install that right now. See how the bearing came out? Let's let's look at the drawing here. The snap ring just needs to go in deeper. Yeah. See how there's a second groove in there? Yeah. So we were just on the outside one. Go all the way in with it. There you go. Now, now just let go of them. Now snap it in. Just push it. Yeah. So that snap ring is not acceptable right now, yeah. is it? No. It's way too violated. So let's let's take that off. And let's try that other one. Push, put, put. So you're going to use the tool to put pressure there, and use your thumb on the bottom. That's beautiful. There you go. Let go. Get rid of the tool and do the rest by hand. There you go. Almost in. Okay. So we can still finish building our cases. We need to replace both of those, unfortunately. They're, they're completely unacceptable. We need okay. two new snap rings on that. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. But at least now, what will happen is the, the transmission can't just fall out on yeah. us. Okay, so that's our goal. So do you guys feel like you understand how you could check uh, what I call assembled height? And then you found uh, two different ways that you could check the inside one. If you don't have one of these, you haven't cut off, you saw how you could do a depth measurement to see what that looks like and, and be real exact.